Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson, Acts 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Here ends the reading. Clap your hands, all you peoples, shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, 
He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. Ephesians 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know that what is the hope to which he has called you? What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to, who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his hand, right hand to heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only but in his age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel for everyone Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There are many words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things, and see, I am sending upon you with my Father promise to stay here in this city till you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. 
and they worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one, undivided God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We celebrate today the Feast of the Ascension, a feast day that reminds us or retells the story of, of Jesus after the resurrection, who he appears to all the apostles, and then as they record it, 40 days after the, the resurrection, they gather together and on this hill, he, he rises from their midst and, and disappears with a promise that the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the Comforter, will, will come and, and be with them. This is an amazing day. It's one that has been a transformative day for my theology. It is because when I look back on this day, I realize that they, 2,000 years ago, used the language to the best of their ability to describe an indescribable experience. First of all, they experienced an understanding of, of God being with them in a human form, that the actual Messiah had arrived, and that the Messiah was more than just a political figure, but something far larger than that. In fact, it was God with them. And this blew their minds, their understanding, changed everything, and, and with the crucifixion dealt a devastating blow to them. But then the birth of Christianity occurred on Easter morning when, when God said, I'm with you, I will be with you, and transformed death itself. And said, this is no longer a barrier for you. And that you and I, that the power of God and humanity can be somehow connected and Jesus comes back to be with them. The ultimate power of the state is the execution of a criminal. This is the ultimate threat and that that no longer had any sway over God somehow transformed everything. And God was with them, Jesus appearing with them, changing the way they understood life and death and their, their faith. And then somehow Jesus was with them and left their presence. How they described that in the language was he arose into heaven because their image of God was heaven was up and, and hell is down. And somehow God is like in the sky looking over us. So their description was that God, that Jesus somehow re-entered the experience of the larger presence of God. For us today, and in reflecting on this, I'm always struck by where, you know, for a modern day, where did he go if he rose to the sky? Did he travel to another planet? Did he go to another city? Did, where, where was, where did that, what happened to Jesus? But their language wasn't in a 20th century, 21st century mode. Their language was in a 2,000 year old mode of, of God is in the sky and, and we're not, so God entered into this realm of God. We, too, experience the power of God, as Jesus said, the Comforter, God the Spirit now, will come within you. Up to that point, there was God and there was us. Now, Jesus is opening the door for the understanding that the presence of God will be and understood in all of us. That we, too, will understand the power of God merged somehow into our very being the core of the essence of our being, and that it always was that way. We just had a limited understanding of, of our being and our experience of the human understanding. But God opened the door that the same spirit that moved in creation, that formed the, the waters and the light and the darkness and the dry land, that that spirit is also working in us. 
and that the presence of God would come into our world, would somehow bring an aha experience that changed all of the perceptions and that that would somehow pull away and be transformed into a deeper understanding of God is the description of a spiritual journey of any human life. And Jesus is demonstrating it, acting it out, step by step. And the ascension is a pivotal point in our spiritual development. The ascension of God, of Jesus, into the larger realm of God, pulls us with him and pulls the power of God not just into an other person standing in front of us, but into our very being. And our very being being somehow interwoven into God's is the power of the ascension. That this is coming, this is happening, to somehow change our perception. This happens in a spiritual journey from the aha moment, the conversion, the realization of there is a larger presence, that the smallness of my life in the cosmos, that I am just this tiny little form of life on one planet and miss a million, and somehow the very power of all creation is working within me. That aha moment comes and, and opens our life up, but there also comes that moment of separation or, or moving away, that we, we have the breathing in and the breathing out, that, that God moves us into a deeper relationship. In the same way, a marriage at first is all the, the passion, the excitement, and moves into a daily routine, and, and year after year there comes a moment, who are we, where are we going? And, and there are the challenges to move that relationship from a young love to a, a deeper middle age love. And finally, as we enter older age, that this is a journey that we have taken year after year. And our spiritual journey is one that has to move from a aha moment, a moment of, yes, I see God, to the, the challenges and the doubts and the, the duties that we have to, that we follow into an even deeper place that is just known in our breath, known in our breathing in and breathing out that the power of God will be with us and take any circumstance, no matter the horror of life, the challenge of life, the pain of life, the grief that we might endure. And in that moment, speak to us and pull out the power of God that transforms those moments of challenge into a moment that in fact deepens our relationship in the same way that in Maine, if you make it through the hard winter or the, the big storm together and your neighbors together working together, your bonds are deeper. In the same way going through the challenges of, of illness and hardship and challenges that that is made deeper and deeper, the relationship with God. This is part of the discipleship moment. The disciples gather together with Jesus on the hillside. And somehow in their midst, the power of God was transformed from being physically with them to where did you go? There's a promise given, but I don't know what that means. And we too enter that in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of family illness or separations, that God is with us. And in this comes the promise of God, that God lets us know this is what's ahead. We will experience something far deeper than we knew before. Our institution of the church, of our structure of theology that we've understood of Christianity is evolving in a way that is beyond our understanding. Christianity was formed and built on a radical re-understanding of the theology of the day, opening it up that God might break in in a deeper way. It was not the established way that will always be for centuries. It was the established truth that God continues to break through and defy our limitations 
God is doing that again. And on this ascension, in the midst of a pandemic, God is opening again, leaving the way in which we've known God in the structures of our institutions and churches and and, and places of worship into a way that is far bigger than we've ever known before, with a promise that God is going to open a door of the Comforter, the Spirit of God is coming in a new way. This is an exciting time. This is the opportunity of God's grace. Let us celebrate the ascension of God as the reality of God is at work in our midst. And God will transform us. We are called, like the apostles, to wait. Wait as they did on the hillside, not having a clue what to do, whether it's with the the, the circumstance of the church in the midst of technology or the moment of the present days that we struggle with. God will surprise us. This is the ascension. And we too, the church of today, wait with the apostles for the Pentecost to arrive. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and the unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Thomas, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone 
And so, and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Eucharistic Prayer A, that's found on page 361 in your red prayer books. The Lord be with you, and also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice to the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father, who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed Amen. be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, Amen. thy will be done, on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send Amen. us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you and all those whom you love this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Wow, enough time to edit. <laughs>